Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming. It's 1.30. Thank you very much to TTAF for broadcasting these proceedings today. We'll go ahead and call the Governor's EMS and Trauma Advisory Council Education Committee to order. We'll have roll call. Jody Harbert here. Sandra Crady. John Creech. Here. Robert Gonzalez. Here. Jeff Hayes. Here. Robert Nappage. Here. Laura Lefevers. Here. Oscar Salazar. Here. Greg LeMay. Here. Lance Villers. Here. Kelly Weller. Here. We have a quorum. Very good. Thank you all again for making the trek today. We've had several things going on, I believe, since we met the last time. Uh, we've met twice. We met um, last meeting was July 20th uh, at Bryan College Station. Uh, item one on the agenda, we're actually going to kind of take all these and put them together because as we worked on documents and uh, worked through them, we pretty much found that all three of the things on the agenda had, had meshed. Uh, one of the requests that we had had was to try to make sure that we included more public comment and know that if we didn't, it wasn't intentional, but we had everything posted properly and had gone to uh, the Texas Register and had agendas and had quorums, and sometimes we made decisions uh, in our workshops because we could. Um, certainly to make sure that we are trans transparent as possible, uh, we will uh, open up a couple of things that we've done in those meetings to make sure that we do get public comment today. Um, we spent a large majority of our time working on the checklist to help coordinators uh, in developing transition courses. Um, this was a charge from DSHS in October of 2011 to help them identify the number of hours uh, needed in, in transition material. Uh, and we've taken a look uh, in our May meeting as well, um, looking at those hours that were described by the NASIMSO um, state EMS directors and um, state, uh, excuse me, and uh, National Association of EMS Educators, NIMSI, uh, to look at the transition documents and pretty much looked at 18 hours for paramedics, 16 for intermediate, 13.5 for EMT, and 8 for first responder. Uh, when we met in Saxe, we had asked um, for a uh, work group that consisted of Ryan Wolford from Methodist Dallas and Brian Erickson from Tarrant County College uh, to help with a draft outline of the paramedic refresher course uh, and looking at the transition content. Um, our, our goal in this committee was to present the final draft to GTAC Council for November 12th. Uh, during that, we have looked at this from several different angles um, as a committee. Uh, as well as the presentation that we had in Bryan um, and trying to figure out um, some questions. And a couple of questions came up, and one was, is it necessary to notify Department of State Health Services of CE transition course with the official course notification and fee? Uh, and we looked at and figured out if you had an ongoing CE course, you could add your number and move on. Um, we still have the request for the appropriate language by DSHS. Hopefully we'll have that in November so that we know what we need to put on the documents to show that you have had um, the transition material. Um, the, transi the transition content, though, has to be tied to individual CE um, and individual course, and that course has to have the approval number. Um, so that we make sure that this will be an officially approved state course. Um, during that time, we had a presentation, um, and I'm going to send this to DSHS and ask them to, to put the document online. It was really too long to put um, for it today because it's about 12 or 13 pages. Um, it's a draft document. It will say draft over it, um, where the work group was able to put together paramedic refreshers as well as transition course uh, to try to put those together. Um, the, we did, or they did paramedic first, even though it's the last one to be done, it's probably the most difficult one uh, to get done. Um, and looking at 32 hours, 18.1 uh, hours of those um, for your refresher where 32 of those would be considered transitional and by using all the alphabet courses, we're pretty much able to satisfy everything within the transition course. 
one of the things that were brought up was we wanted to make this course um, as flexible, with flexible core content. And let me say that this committee is not saying this is the only way to do a transition course. This, we are simply bringing up options. Um, and it is the hope of this committee that with options, you all will have the ability to find one that works best for you in your area. Uh, whether you're able to use card courses to get research and transition, whether you're able to just use transition courses, uh, we want to make this as flexible as possible, making sure we have enough core content. One of the things that was discussed, uh, and I think the committee felt fairly strong about it, was that if you just take the transition material uh, from a section and just talk about that, it's really going to be kind of haphazard because one moment you're talking about performing rapid trauma assessment and then the next thing is shock and then the next thing is a patient experiencing pain and discomfort uh, trying to make sure that all of those things were 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 done in part of the course so um, the we had a motion made by Kelly Weller um, reference EMS certificates may complete the national registry transition process by attending a Department of State Health Services approved CE or initial education training program that meets the minimum guidelines and content of NASIMSO transition templates. Course completion documents must bear a course or program number. Um, and we would present this motion today at our regular scheduled GTAC meeting and take any public comment on that action. So that's the first thing that we have on our plate today. I think most of the members here today were actually there. Uh, at the uh, meeting. Any, any further comment from committee members? Any public comment? Okay. Hearing, hearing none, uh, we still have the motion on the floor by Kelly from the last one, which we just, just read. Um, all those in favor, sign of aye. aye. All those opposed, sound of no. Okay, unanimous vote, thank you. Again, this is just one, one way. Uh, what we'll ask is that this is put out on the um, DISH's website for public comment. I'll be taking this with that approval to GTAC tomorrow, asking them to put this for a vote on the November um, conference, conference schedule. So thank you very much for your help, help there. Um, National EMS Standards uh, Committee, um, completed its review of the gap analysis that's been submitted for quite a while now. Uh, that gap analysis actually, when you look at the transition course, and keep in mind it does say draft, for that draft transition course, will actually have um, the gaps filled in from the gap analysis and we're actually part of this transition course. So uh, I think when you take a look at it, and I'd like to thank everyone who sent emails and phone calls and came to the two meetings, um, in Sachse and, and in Austin and in Bryan uh, to help us get this document together. Uh, we're looking at transition permit course de details, about 18.1 hours, um, which basically covers uh, anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, lifespan, EMS systems, prep, shock and resuscitation, uh, trauma essential con content, abdominal pain, orthopedics, soft tissue, neuro, special considerations, special patients, and EMS ops, um, as well as additional content uh, of BiPAP, CPAP, PEEP, drownings, um, and tidal CO2 monitoring, nasogastric OG tubes, King Airway, chest wall monitoring, uh, chest tube uh, mo monitoring, um, access in dwelling catheters and implanted central IV ports, um, Morgan's lens for eye trauma, and administer physician approved medications and the legal discussion that goes, goes with it. So if and when you take a look at it, please feel free to send comments to any member of this committee. We will compile those and take a look at those. Uh, and anything that you see thinks ne that you think needs to be added or changed, please bring it to us. We will have this on our agenda for our October 5th meeting, um, for, excuse me, our October 5th work group meeting. Um, to work through this and to make whatever changes we need to. Um, we chose October 5th because one of the things that we want to make sure is that we have the opportunity to bring you whatever's fresh and whatever's newest 
to you in November for a vote. Um, we actually, a couple of members brought up that sometimes our work group meetings are so close to the next quarterly meeting that we're not able to change anything because things have to be in at least 30 days prior. So we're going to work really hard to make sure that all of our meetings are at least 35 days out so we have time to get everything to dishes and get it posted in the Texas Register for you. Did I miss anything? Okay. You guys are my eyes and ears here. Um, there was some discussion over CCMP from our last meeting, and I know that this group, we had looked at this back in April and had made the recommendation to discard CCMP as one of the five ways to recertify. Uh, on April 13th, we had a motion uh, with a quorum um, to remove or delete CCMP from the CE rule. Uh, I know that yesterday the medical directors uh, met and talked about whether they wanted to or did not want, want to. Um, we'll make the recommendation from this committee as requested uh, to them uh, and put this out for public comment uh, as well and bring that back in November for a final vote. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, um, not that we just took one away, um, we've just tried to look at some data and actually figure out um, who had been using it. Let me go back to my April notes here for a second. We had 2009, 2010, 2011 data um, and basically had found that it was a mechanism that had been in place. Uh, but hadn't been used for the three three years. And let me acknowledge, it was a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of effort that went into CCMP. Uh, and certainly we don't want to discount that as it not being a viable option at all. Uh, we were just looking at ways to stream streamline or take something out that dishes would not have to govern or take a look at or have personnel for or time time for. Because in 2011, if you remember, um, we were able to get some stats from, from dishes, and that is that um, nine people took the test, 23 people used a research course, 867 people used National Registry to recertify, and 8,637 used CE, whereas no one had used CCMP in 2009, 2010, or 2011. So again, it was not um, a thought of just doing away with it um, haphazard, but because no one had uh, used it. Um, if it's still an option that needs to be viable, we'll ask GTAC to uh, take that under ad advisement. Um, let me go back to a different file. I'm trying to use less paper, if you can believe that. Um, Jeff Ritz, are you here from Temple? No? Um, Jeff was at the July meeting um, and Temple College had received a grant through the Texas Workforce Commission to help transition military allied health providers to civilian EMS pro providers. Uh, I know Temple is working on that. Teeks has also been working on that um, as we start to bring a lot of veterans home from the two wars. Um, there appears to be a need to help transition uh, military allied health providers to civilian. Um, Jeff, was that whiskey? Which one? 91 whiskey is the actual. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, 91 whiskey is the actual paramedic level course. 91 Bravo is the EMT basic. We're, as an ex program director in a community college, where the military, the vets get jammed up is in the whiskey course. Because once they get, become nationally registered, if they let their national registry lapse, obviously by being in country fighting, they come back, they have no method of reobtaining that without going through a full course. So I applaud Temple College and Jeff to, to help us build some solution for that. Okay. Um, we'll ask him if he can come to the October meeting uh, and bring us some more information because I think whatever any of us can do to help our armed services transition back into civilian life would be extremely helpful for us. So. Um, Jody, yes. one other thing, I know um, 
Dr. Robert Mabry from UT, or actually from uh, SAMSI down in San Antonio also would probably be a resource we may want to reach out to to help us as we begin to work through this whole process. I know Jeff is carrying the torch from the community college side, but we, we need to interface with the military as much as possible, and I think Dr. Mabry is, would be an excellent resource for us. Okay. Jody, if I could please add uh, as well, Jeff has done uh, a significant amount of work in comparing the curriculums of the uh, 91 Whiskey course to the national standard uh, curriculum. And he has uh, developed a credit award process um, which would expedite the veteran through the paramedic course. And just having seen the outlines of it, uh, it, it looks really promising. And so I encourage you, if you're interested, to please contact Jeff, especially with school starting just next week for many of us, um, to uh, contact Jeff. And if nothing else, if you've got a veteran, maybe to pilot through the program and report data back to Jeff so that he can include that information in his grant reporting. Mr. Shaw, do you mind making contact with, with him? To my, Dr. Mabry? Yes. Oh, not at all. I'll okay. Is, is that something we want to put on October or move to November? Probably be November, because I've got to check to make sure. I know his son was just recently deployed to Afghanistan, and I don't know where Dr. Mabry is in his deployment. So okay. let's shoot for November, be a safer bet. Okay. Wow. I'm looking at the time that we covered it. Okay. No filler here. Um, I believe, committee, it was your um, request to have our next meeting, our work group meeting, October 5th here at the Learning Resource Center at 9 a.m. Mr. Hayes, is that set? Are we? It is confirmed. Okay. All they right. just don't have a room number and they don't assign those until like the day before. So if you show up, it'll be on the board where we are. Okay. All right. So our next meeting will be October 5th in Austin at the Learning Resource Center from 9 to 3. Um, agenda items, I believe you all wanted identify methods to have EMS provider titles in Texas match the course names and certification and exam titles. Um, Close the gap that allows in our EMT assessment exams to meet initial DSHS certification. Lori, is that, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. There was some concern from uh, the public and from committee members that there are certificates, licensees in Texas who were able to meet that initial certification using the assessment path rather than the certification exam path. Okay. Um, item four was set a standard for equivalency programs and transfer programs. And number five was to discuss requirement for medical director for CE programs. Um, and I think that's going to take on a little different life of its own depending upon what we have to do for transition courses and CE uh, to have medical director involvement uh, that maybe we haven't had in the uh, past. Um, and then number six was discuss quality of online education programs. And then number seven was discuss um, DSHS negotiation of contiguous state regulatory agreements. So too bad we don't have much to do in October. Uh, with seven things on the uh, agenda so far. Committee members, anything else you'd like to see added? Anything else we need to look for in our October? Jody, I have one thing that I, I think we probably want to follow, uh, and I just want to ask committee members to um, follow this discussion as well. Um, on the medical director's committee meeting yesterday, there was an agenda item about a position statement regarding students writing with services and uh, some of the discussion about who is ultimately res 
was about who is ultimately responsible for the patient and who is responsible for the practice of the student. And uh, so there, there was a little bit of discussion about that. There was certainly no action taken that, that I can recall from that meeting. Um, and the, one of the concerns that I, that I heard, uh, and if there's somebody here from the medical director's committee who can address this issue, please step forward and, and answer this for us. Oh, great, yay. Dr. Moore, Dr. Greenberg. <laughs> do a, a paper on it and, and see what all the ramifications are. There's no set pat an answer to that question. Um, and so all those thoughts are going to be looked at uh, and we'll bring it back and certainly can get it to you guys as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Any, any potential, oh, excuse me, any estimated time frame? I think we're going to have it by November. The okay. The paperwork will be done by, by November. Yeah. Dr. Jeff Jarvis, who knows a little bit about education, if you make it aware. If you'll uh, come up, because we are broadcasting, Dr. Ingberg, everybody wants to know who your smiling face is. <laughs> Bobby Greenberg, Chair of the Medical Directors Committee. Um, one of the other Jeffs in EMS, Dr. Jeff Jarvis, who used to run an educational program, has taken this on. He's already sent a draft to me that we will have at our next meeting that hopefully we can then push through to the, G to the entire council. So it's very possible we'll have something by November, not November, then by the next meeting. Okay. Any, and any input you want to give us, we'll be happy to hear. Okay. So, gang, am I hearing, Lori, you want to add number eight, student responsibility for student practice during clinicals as an agenda item? Yes, please. Okay. I think that's it like that's not enough. Jody. Yes. Would you like for me to ask Dr. Jarvis to attend our October meeting? That would be wonderful. Can. That would be wonderful. Any, uh, you know, all of our meetings are open and the more people we have there, the better outcomes we have, the more information we have, the better decisions that get made. So anybody, I, that's just a standing. I mean, anybody from anywhere, we would love to have all of you there. Any public comment on the upcoming agenda items? Well, we will hope to see all of you all there. Any announcements from committee? Can we hear from our state EMS director? I figured y'all probably wanted to go home, but this is probably the most appropriate place to make this announcement. And that is uh, the Texas Administrative Code 15732 that you all worked so diligently on to require accreditation in the state of Texas beginning January 1, 2013, is effective today, August 16th. <laughs> Also, uh, at the conference this year, uh, we also have an opportunity for some scholarships for, for our rural and frontier areas. So if you know some people that want to come to the conference, the scholarship will pay for registration, the hotel, and parking at the hotel. So if you know anyone in our rural and frontier areas that want to come to this year's conference, please have them apply. There's, a, ap there's an application in our magazine. I'm pretty sure it's in the magazine. I think you get it off the website also. But this is probably going to close in a couple of weeks, so I encourage you to go ahead and get those applications in as soon as possible. And the priority is rural frontier. Uh, then they'll take into consideration whether they've ever been to the conference before, uh, and then whether they're volunteer or paid service. Max, do we have any word on local project grants being awarded yet? They should be. It's next week, I think. Uh, I don't see anybody here from that side of the house. You know, Kelly? I think it's going to be up there now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we have the work that we did on Permetic refresher and transition, thank you. And I think those are the only two motions that we'll send to GTAC, is that, is that correct? Okay. Anything else? Any public comment? Need a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Creech, second by Dr. Gonzalez. All those in favor, sign of aye. Aye. We're done, thank you very much.